Hey guys, welcome back to Topher Drives. Today we're driving the 2022 Audi RS3. I don't really know what I want to do in this video. I just put my camera on this morning and, uh, well, afternoon I suppose, and decided that I wanted to go for a drive in the Audi RS3 because we don't spend a lot of time in Audis, uh, especially me. I don't have the best opinion on Audis and I was hoping that the RS3 would change that for me because it's the most up my alley. This is powered by an inline five cylinder turbo engine with 401 horsepower Power is sent to all four wheels via this seven speed DCT, dual clutch automatic transmission. And that just sounds like a recipe for so much fun and savagery and just absolute automotive perfection. But I've been driving this thing around for a couple of days and I don't know that it's exactly as good as I thought it was gonna be. Not to say that it's a bad car, it is a fabulous piece of machinery, but I don't know that it is particularly up my alley. But today I just thought we'd go out for a little bit of a drive, kind of talk about Audi, in this car and I need a little bit of an afternoon pick-me-up so I'm gonna go get a coffee and uh, you guys can come along for me on the mostly highway drive there should be one good entrance ramp hopefully we don't get blocked by anybody but um, yeah it'll just be a nice little chill relaxed video I don't want to completely steal the Topher's uh, review format because of course there will be a review on this Audi RS3 on the Topher channel. He will be able to get his hands on this car. And I will make sure to post this after his video to make sure he gets all of the uh, the first impressions for, uh, for his audience. But if you guys like hanging out with me, then uh, chill out for 20 or so minutes and uh, we'll play around with this Audi RS3. Let's take a look at the outside of it. It's finished in this beautiful shade of gray. I'm forgetting what the color is called now, but I'll put it right here just so you all can uh, bask in its glory with me. It's almost like a blue gray, but it has this like pink, red, pearlescent, like metallic thing that comes out. The sun is behind a cloud right now, so you can't really see it, but it's quite a color. Audi was getting quite boring with just having Nardo gray on everything, but I respect them for putting this slightly different gray on the RS3. And while we're up front here, I wanna show you my favorite part of this car. Look at these front fenders. I don't know how well that picks up on camera, but the fenders are wide and they have this little vent here, which I do believe to be functional, uh, right behind the front wheels. So a pretty cool look. I wish they would have carried that design to the rear. I believe these are the same quarter panels you get on just an A3 and the wheels are set in slightly. The fitment is perfect on the front, but it doesn't look quite right on the back. So just kind of a weird, uh, petty observation there. We've got dual exhaust tips. This car does have the sport exhaust system. It's a thousand dollar option, but it's still not very loud. So I don't know what that's about. Audi never really makes their cars loud. And I think that has something to do with European sound regulations. Take a look in the trunk here. Oh, it's full. Right, I've got some car parts in here for my own personal hoopties, um, which I will be giving you guys a fleet update soon. It's just gotten totally out of control. My camera bag, but pretty decent trunk space for uh, a car in this segment. No, no issue fitting some uh, V8 AMG uh, valve cover and intake gaskets in there. Bang & Olufsen sound system. Won't waste your time sitting in the back seat, but just so you can take a look at it. And what I really like about this car is what Audi always does with their RS models. They put like this almost like honeycomb stitch pattern into the seats. These just have the black stitching, so they're not anything super exciting. Black leather is your only option, but you can have green or red stitching if you so desire, because of course you can get the exterior finished in a bright green or like a red orange color. Um, so, or actually I think it's more of just like a, like a race red, like a traditional red. So you can make your uh, interior stitching match that. And I've got to say that with this new generation of A3, S3 and RS3, Audi has really, really stepped it up. And I know I say new, I think it's been around now for a couple of years, but um, I really, really like what they've done with this interior. It's a really, really nice place to be. And especially for this being the entry level Audi, you know, it's the smallest one. It's pretty nice to see. So there is our five cylinder turbo engine. That is a cool thing, guys. How many manufacturers nowadays put a five cylinder turbo in their little compact car. It's a really, really cool idea. And I really appreciate that Audi still gives us that. Now this is admittedly the first RS3 I've driven and the only other car of this nature that I have driven is the A3 of the same generation. So I'm not super experienced with these cars, but um, I can certainly appreciate them for what they are. My problem with Audis is that like, 
they're always just, I don't want to use the word boring, but they, they never like, they, they never give me the fizz as, as James May would say. They never scratch that itch for just, just a little bit, you know, a little bit of snappiness, the exhaust crackles and just like, I don't know. I, I never really get that from Audis. And I was really, really hoping that this RS3 would give me that. And um, I'm hoping maybe I will find it today. We're going to do a little bit of spirited driving, hopefully. As I said, our route's going to be mostly highway, but we'll try and open this thing up and uh, let you guys hear that five-cylinder turbo sing. I'm going to my favorite coffee shop here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's called Drip House, and um, it's just fabulous. They also have some very good avocado toast, but I've already eaten this morning. I had some leftover Chinese food that uh, Charlie from Daily Motor bought for me last night after we got his 300,000-mile uh, Ford Escape Hybrid from Copart running together. So. Um, that was my breakfast, but I really need some energy. So we're going to go ahead and uh, go and grab myself a coffee. Try and enjoy this RS3 just a little bit. I want to get some air on the GoPro so it doesn't overheat. So we've got a few different drive modes here in this RS3. Um, We've got Comfort, Auto, and Dynamic, but when you go into Dynamic, you have a couple of different options, RS Individual, RS Performance, and then you also have the rear-wheel the rear -wheel drive bias drive mode, which I assume is the same technology you get in the Golf R when you put it into drift mode. So that's quite peculiar. I haven't tried that out uh, because I'm a bit of a scaredy pants when it comes to all-wheel drive torque vectoring systems biasing the rear wheels. Freaks me out a little bit because sometimes it is unpredictable. My dad has a Ford Focus RS and I've done drift mode a couple times in that car and it is slightly terrifying, if I'm being honest. Quite a large steering wheel here in this Audi RS3 and the last gen of RS3 had a flat bottom steering wheel and this just has a big round boy but it is perforated all the way around. So if you do get sweaty hands like I do, um, it shouldn't be too big of an issue gripping the steering wheel. All right, I can't take it anymore. We gotta go into dynamic mode here. You can cycle through the drive modes just by pressing the drive select button, or you can use the touch screen when that screen comes up. You can lock the car into manual mode simply just by pulling a paddle. You can hear the car gets quite a bit louder and you can you can hear that transmission selecting gears as well. It pulls so hard, the torque band. And I like how the power isn't necessarily linear. So here I'll show you. I'll give it 50% power the whole way in fourth gear, Eddie. <laughs> Did you hear that change? <laughs> it does have a little bit of turbo lag and uh, power really starts to build over 3,000 RPM and I can appreciate that. It's, it's one thing that this Audi does that isn't predictable is um, this power band here. -hoo -hoo. Great feel through that brake pedal. All of the predictableness of this Audi RS3 makes it very, very easy and um, sometimes satisfying to drive. Sometimes it's so easy that it isn't satisfying, which is one of my like complaints with Audis in general. But um, I've got to say, this is my favorite Audi that I've driven. Um, it's just, it, it, it does all of the things. I just wish that it's at like eight and I wish I could turn it up to 11. And you could do that, I suppose, with, with some aftermarket accessories. You could put a different exhaust on it and you could have it tuned as the Topher would say. So all of those things would, would help, I suppose. All right, hold on, folks. We will not be following USA Insulation. We're gonna turn around and go on the ramp the other way. It makes a good noise, I'll give it that. Could it be louder? Yes, it could, but just the raw noise of that five-cylinder turbo. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, let's hear it sing a little bit more. <laughs> uh, 
That's so cool. The amount of grip that this thing has is just unbelievable. Going around that clover leaf at, well, I won't say it, but you all saw the speed that I was traveling at, and it probably could have gone a little bit faster. It wasn't even squealing super heavily there. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, we're on the highway now. Well, you know what? Let's stay in dynamic. Screw it. Just in case we get any opportunities. Well, I hope you all are having uh, a good day. I'm just kind of starting my day a little bit late today, you know. I was out kind of late last night and um, got a late start to the morning, but I wanted to spend as much time as I could in this Audi RS3. I'm going to run and grab this coffee here in about 15 minutes and um, then I'm going to go over to the garage where I will hopefully, my intention anyways, is to start another Topher Drives video where I give you all a fleet update on the status of all of my cars, at least all of the ones that are over at the garage, which is all but one, um, all but my uh, Porsche Cayman S. So you'll be able to see status on all of those cars. But I did actually just buy another car. And um, well, if you follow me on Instagram, you already know what it is. I won't say it on here, but if you wanna go follow me at Topher.Brower on Instagram, you can go see what I purchased. But if you'd like to leave it a surprise, you can wait until I reveal it here on the YouTube channel. It is quite a riot of a car, and unfortunately we can't drive it today because the driver's seat is off being reupholstered. It was the worst part of the car, and I just, I couldn't stand looking at the car with the driver's seat in the state of decay that it was in. So I went ahead and sent that out to get reupholstered. I can still show you the car. I'll show you a little sneak peek of the car, um, but unfortunately we can't, uh, we can't go for a drive. But I have way too many cars. It's just, I, I don't know what it is. I'm... I'm such a, and Charlie from Daily Motor and I have talked about this, he is more of a driving enthusiast and I am more of a car enthusiast. I appreciate cars as art. Um, I have so many cars in my collection as well that I'm just very like bonded to and just never want to sell. Comment below if that's something that you sort of suffer from as well because I wish that I could more easily sell cars. I think part of the problem is we all grew up playing video games where you just added cars to your collection, you added cars to your garage, and you never necessarily sold them, so you could always go back in your collection and drive whatever you wanted. And I feel like that's part of my issue, is that I just, I want to keep collecting. But I'm not really <laughs> in the financial, uh, I'm not like financially stable enough as a 24 year old to really do that. Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe someday I'll have like a house with a beautiful garage and I can start hoarding all of the late nineties BMWs and late nineties Lincolns and all of the things that I'm on a kick for right now. But until then, let's just enjoy this Audi RS3. <laughs> That never gets old. We're gonna give this Jeep a little bit of space here so I can uh, do another clover leaf. All right, we got a Mercedes coming up on me. We gotta hustle. Oh, we're only gonna get to hustle for like three seconds. <laughs> okay, let's chill out a little bit. into the right lane. There's something to be said about how much effort Audi puts into the way that, that, the, that their cars can just be so balanced around corners and just so dynamically perfect in that way. And I suppose you can either have one or the other, right? Very few cars deliver that sort of rambunctious fizz and also are just so dynamically perfect. And the old, and the, the, the closest I've gotten is, is, is Porsche. Porsche does it right in every way, but uh, seeing as though Audi is kind of a sister company, oh, it's under the wing of Volkswagen, you do get a little bit of that in here. And 
it's just it is it is very very impressive the way that this thing goes around corners the way that it sounds and also just the way that audi still gives us this beautiful five cylinder powertrain here in america i really do appreciate them for that they've kind of been stepping it up lately we've got the rs3 they gave us the rs6 avant which is a crazy v8 wagon but um i think i like this better than the rs6 avant i have driven it i've experienced it for a little bit and um I had higher expectations for the RS6 Avant, and it was very fast, but that was just about it. I mean, it was very, very fast, and it was very impressive around corners, but it didn't give me that fizz, so I don't know. I do struggle with Audis, and this RS3 is the closest I've gotten to a fizz in, in an Audi. It's just a little bit louder, a little bit snappier, but had a little bit more character. I'm, I'm very big on soul and character. And this, this RS3 to me is more of a laptop than it is a person. You get into a Lexus LC500 and you just sense the soul. You know, you get into any Porsche really, even the, God, I'm gonna be crucified in the comments for this. Even the Macan, you get in, you get in a, a Porsche Macan S and you feel some of that character um, in that car. And I just, I don't know guys. The RS3 is a little bit of a laptop. It's a very impressive laptop and a very expensive laptop. But have I bonded with it? I don't think I have. Somewhat of a silly compliment here. You have to reach for the paddles, but I kind of like that because I like to just have my hands like this on the steering wheel and they don't always have to rest on the paddle shifters. That's something that Charlie complained about and I actually disagree with him. I like where the paddles are mounted. It makes it quite convenient for if you just want to chill out and not be driving like an agriob all the time. Ooh, I think we're gonna pass the Porsche dealer. Maybe we should swing through the parking lot and see if they've got anything cool. There is a pedestrian. We'll go ahead and let them. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. It's very brave on this road. A two lane, 55 mile an hour road, and she's just going <laughs> in between cars. <laughs> okay, to each their own, I suppose. This license plate here, it has hot peppers on it, and it says, ARG! <laughs> New Mexico, that's a unique license plate there. Got a fun little setup over here. You've got Honda, Porsche, Audi, and Volkswagen. All in one little uh, auto mall thing. Sometimes they've got some really cool stuff over here in the uh, in the Porsche dealership. And I'm in an I'm in an Audi, so I don't feel like I'm gonna be too out of place over here. What do we got in the showroom? Looks like a Macan GTS. Ooh, a very tasty uh, 964 Turbo. It, it, it appears anyways. I hope I'm right about that. Got a really cool Guards Red uh, 981 Cayman, or maybe a, oh, it's a 718, 718 Cayman. There's a 987 Cayman S, ooh, that looks familiar. I actually looked at that car on their website. It's a Tiptronic and they want $35,000 for it, which is quite outrageous if you ask me. It's a beautiful day to go get a coffee at 2 p.m. I always have like really good intentions for these comfort mode uh, episodes. And speaking of which, let's go back into comfort mode as we talk about comfort mode and back into drive, okay. But then I actually get to where I'm starting the video and I'm like, wow, I have nothing to talk about. I'm so inspired by uh, Tedward's series, his, his therapy drives, and I'm like, that would just be so cool to like do a video series like that here on Topher drives and um, unfortunately I'm just not quite as philosophical as Tedward is now granted he does uh, he does have some years on me he has been alive for quite a bit longer not to call you old Tom if you're if you're watching but I don't know maybe maybe someday these videos will make a little bit more sense but 
as I think of topics, I will make videos, but I don't want to promise that I'm just going to have comfort mood videos all the time. But maybe I don't even have to talk about anything valuable. Maybe we can just go for a drive and enjoy the car that we're driving. I give this DCT credit, man. It's, it's very smooth in stop and go traffic. It's not jerking me around or anything. And comfort mode is really comfort mode. This active suspension in this car softens way up when you're in comfort mode. It almost gets like floaty and bouncy. It's, it's, it's interesting. I like, I, to be honest, it's going to sound hilarious, but I kind of like the way the suspension feels in dynamic mode better than comfort. But uh, if you're in dynamic, then it's like holding gears and being all snappy and such. So we'll leave it in comfort mode, but the active suspension is best suited. Or you also have auto, which will automatically sense, you know, what your, what sort of driving style you have. So maybe we'll try out auto mode. If you live in Michigan, you should know where I'm at right now. We are about to drive by the big house, U of M football stadium. Did you hear that also? <laughs> it's, just, it's so exaggerated and loud going over potholes in this thing. There it is, the big house. The coffee shop is right up here on the right, but I'm going to actually ignore where it tells me to park, and I'm gonna park in a parking lot down the street because the parking lot at this particular coffee shop is the worst parking lot uh, to exist in the history of the universe, and that is including Trader Joe's parking lots. So that, if that tells you how bad uh, the, the parking lot is, but luckily there is a large open parking lot about a half, quarter mile down the street, and uh, it just makes it, makes it easy. Plus it gives you some steps, you can walk some of the, uh, the latte off that you're about to consume. Oof, you hear that? See, now in my mind, I've just bent a wheel, but it was just like a very probably minor pothole. All right, let's park up. I'm going to leave you guys in the car. Try and be responsible here. I'm going to let you guard the RS3 while I go and get some coffee. We'll properly end the video once I get back, but I'll show you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We should give her a name. She's in every Audi. She's very polite. She tells you uh, when you left your phone in the car. So. Cool, guys. Well, thanks so much for coming along with me today. I'll talk to you here in just a second. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed kind of just hanging out with me this afternoon and uh, coming along with me to get some very late breakfast, I suppose. But that'll wrap it up for today's video. And, um, well, the Audi RS3, while it is quite an impressive machine, I still don't think it gives me the fizz. I don't think it gives me as much of a fizz as I would like it to. It's still quite exciting. It's still very fast and very impressive, but um, it needs a little bit more spice, a little bit more pizzazz. But I do very much like this car, and it is the best Audi that I've ever driven. So I think that's, that's good enough praise for this car. It's also very pretty to look at. They've done a very, very good job interior and exterior styling wise. So cool. Well, I've said it like four times, but uh, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. That's the first thing that you, the YouTubers say. And then also uh, make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos like this, as well as videos on my personal cars. So cool. Well, cheers. Take care, guys.